In this episode, we will be printing to Hexus's D190 Evo cast final using Mamaki's award winning JV330. Watch as we give you tips and tricks on how to install a van and trailer wrap from professionals in the industry. Let's get right into it. Hi everyone, we are at the Mamaki Atlanta Technology Center in front of the 330 series. About a year ago, we had to update our van and trailer that's going to be going to a lot of the different open houses around uh, the United States, including the versatility tour in a lot of our different regions. Uh, we decided to update the graphics with the 330 series. We wanted to take advantage of the extended color gamut that the solvent inkjet printer provides us with orange ink so we could really get those colors to pop. Uh, we have the bulk ink system, the two liter bulk ink system that gives us more ink, allow us to print overnight without worrying or babysitting the printer. We really got them over to the laminator faster and then move them over to the install process as quick as possible. We were lucky enough to get Jim Miller, Miller Decals, Justin Pate, and the Rap Institute to apply the graphics uh, the next day. Uh, thank you to Hexus for providing us the 190 Evo cast vinyl that we used and the matte laminate that gave us the matte finish that you'll see in the upcoming video. We're going to throw it over to Justin Pate for more details on how his team installed the graphics on our van. Hey everyone, Justin Pate from the Rap Institute and we're very happy to be part of Mamaki's Innovation Days this year. And in this video, what I want to do is give you a full breakdown of how to wrap a van and a trailer for commercial wrap so you're super successful. I'm going to walk you through each stage so if you're new to wrapping vans and trailers, this is a must video to watch. And if you're in the industry and you've been wrapping vans and trailers for quite some time, I'm gonna give some advanced tips and tricks on how to raise that quality, but also lower those install times. So with any type of process when you're doing commercial, there's lots of stages to go through. And in this particular one, what I wanna to touch on first is design. Let's get to that. So for design, you might be wondering why I'm standing in front of the windows right now and not the van and trailer. Well, the main point of this is the design for the first van and trailer that Maki had on there was kind of corporate colors. It was white, black, and red. And the idea was, do we want to stick with that or go with something creative? And the idea was, well, let's go with something creative crazy. That could lead down a really crazy rabbit hole and take a lot of time and back and forth between, in this case, Mamaki and the designer who was Steven Sinek. So to neutralize that, and some the big tip that I highly recommend right now is if you are gonna do that, come up with a new design from an old one, don't go down that rabbit hole, go with what the customer already likes. So when I was talking with Vernon about this, Vernon said, you know what? We have some new designs that we've used in our sign shows. Do you wanna check them out? I checked them out and I said, that's what we're gonna go with. So it's not necessarily their corporate colors. You, these are kind of outside the box. You got those purples, you got those pinks, but we're gonna tie those in with the Mamaki logos and those look really good. So just by using what designs they're already using, incorporating with a van, saved a lot of time and it's something they already liked. That's a big win. If you can cut down that design time while making the client happy, that's a big one. So Steven took the designs, came up with something really, really cool. I like how he started off with black at the front, added the color in the middle, and then ended up with black on the back of the trailer. And the idea for that was, if the van is just going off by itself, the van looks good, the trailer looks good if it's by itself, and when they combine, they look great as well. So thinking big picture wise, and I also like what Steven did is he made a lot of stuff crooked on the van. That means we don't have to make anything straight for the install, that's a big one. So with that being said, in terms of design, let's talk about production, that's a big one. So now that we have the design set, as I said, let's talk about production. Lots of steps to do correctly in production to get it right to make for a very happy install and something that's gonna last for a long time. So first step was to choose the material. So because Mamaki is based in Atlanta, called up Hexus, who's also based in Atlanta, Verada, and said, Verada, you know, do you wanna be part of this project? And he said, of course. So big thank you to Hexus for being part of this project. So I said, Verada, here's the deal. We're wrapping a van and a trailer. Want to use a material that works both on a trailer and a van, because ideally, obviously, you don't have to take that material out of the printer. But if you really want to be smart, you can actually use one material for the trailer that's a calendar film that's made for flat, and then one that's for cast. So in this case, we chose one that's multi-versatile. So we chose a cast product that's highly flexible, so it can go in these deep recessed areas. So very important to not only choose the right print film, but also the right lamination. A lot of sometimes people get the wrong lamination mixed with the print and that can cause it to fail. So once we have the material set up from Hexus, a big thank you for that, we get to printing. So this is printed on a JV330. And the idea for this, this is an eco solvent. So lots of colors on this one, sometimes black. So that means really make sure you outgas it. Highly recommend doing that for at least 24 hours. Once that outgasses, then it is laminated. 
Now keep in mind though, before pressing the button for the printer, what you really have to get right is tiling. And this is where a lot of people make huge mistakes when they're wrapping vans and trailers. So here's where I want to make the main point. So what happened is on the old van wrap, the, person, the company that did it before, didn't necessarily do it wrong, but for me, there's always better, and that's never stop learning attitude, is a lot of people in the industry, when they wrap a van, they just take 54 inch panels, that's what we had, and just drop them from back to front. And that's pretty easy in terms of production and just setting up your panels. The problem with this is several things. Every time you do a vertical panel on a van, that means you have to trim it in production. That takes time. So each one of those panels had to be trimmed, not good. Then when you're wrapping, you have to register those panels on a very difficult recessed area on a big van. That's very difficult to do and can take a lot of time. That means your installers have to be very, very good, otherwise your quality is low. So tiling right now, doing vertical tiles is not good. So what we did on the van is, we're smart. So we took the panels now and actually went from this body line to this body line in one giant sheet, which is super cool, which meant seamless, which meant very easy install. Because Steven is a good designer, what he did with the design is he made all the text fit within this panel, which meant when we did the top panel, which is a separate panel, and we hid the overlap in the body line, didn't really have to register a lot of text, which is cool, and because we hid the body in the overline, overlap, it disappears, looks like paint, it's really cool. Same thing down here, this is what we call in the Rap Institute scene in sections. So this section is separate from here, so these were horizontal panels right here, which makes it seamless and very easy to install. So really saved a lot of time in install just by tiling it a little different. Now keep in mind that we had horizontal panels here, but what we did is we mixed it back up and went vertical here, because it's much better to do vertical here on the door because you got the break of the fender. So door vertical, fender horizontal, and good to go. So that's a huge time saver for install. It actually doesn't take that much time in production, which is a big one for me. That's really, really important. Not a lot of companies are doing it, and I think they're crazy not to do it because the quality is better. And Vernon said too, the guys came out and were like, where the hell is the overlap? Well, no overlap, high quality. That's what you wouldn't call it to say. Let's go to the trailer. Now, in terms of tiling for trailers, again, basically the same story as the van. Basically, the idea is this, is that a lot of people will take the material, 54 inches or 60 inches or whatever, drop it from the back and just go towards the front. The problem with that is, this now means that your overlaps are gonna hang out in the flat sections here, which makes you have overlaps in those middle sections. You're not necessarily worried about stress in terms of recessed areas or anything like that. Registering material even on flat is not that bad. But what does that mean though? It means that those panels have to be trimmed. You're gonna have overlaps there, so time in production, a little longer install time, super frustrating. So what Steven did is, Steven called up and said, yo, give me the uh, size of the panels of each one and I'm gonna make these panels fit. So basically he made sure that he had extra overlap right now. So instead of just doing one inch overlap, they made three or four inches. So that gave the installers time to kind of shift it back and forth. But the idea is they could put the panels here, cut off the overlap here, and then do the next panel. So this entire trailer is seamless, which is great for the install. But keep in mind for production, they had that white bleed on the outside and they just don't have to trim it off in production. So for production, all they did on this entire van basically is they printed, laminated, threw in a box and sent it off to the installers. Huge time savings in production. Then the quality's there because the installers just fly. They don't have to deal with overlaps on both the van and trailer. That saves them time and the quality is outstanding because this looks like paint. So those are the types of tricks you're gonna get on the Rapid Institute. You're not gonna get them anywhere else because Rapid Institute is based on real world experience and wrapping, and that's the name of the game. So, so far, hopefully, you've picked up a ton of tips and tricks. Let's get to install.